<clears throat> it's a Conspiracy is a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown and community supported. For other fun programming, please check out albertapodcastnetwork.com, where you can find shows like The Second Floor Podcast. <clears throat> Oh, oh yeah. Got I'm it. really happy that they asked for our consent. Mm-hmm. Unlike some people on this podcast. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Hey, I think you I know have exactly a recording. what I mean. I have a Andrew. recording of you giving me consent. <laughs> Sounds a lot like me. I'll give yeah. you that. Give I you was that. ahead of Zoom in that regard. Yeah. <laughs> whatever um, CIA technology you're swimming in and whatever. <laughs> I don't want to know. Actually, that does... Yeah, that does remind me that I I do have another recording, you know, further uh, give further evidence to something I've I've mentioned before that Charlie has actually uh, very thoroughly denied. And yet I have evidence. Anyways, we will. Yeah. Okay. So bring fire to the firefight is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just just saying that I'll I'll arm myself. Don't worry. I have have proof. (laughs) Anywho, that's neither here nor there. So this is season four, episode 10, Redemption. Welcome back, everyone, to It's Conspiracy. This is the podcast where we lay out the beliefs behind selected conspiracy theories, alternative accounts, legends, myths, and more. I'm your host, Andrew, and I do not claim to be an expert on anything we're going to discuss today and will probably be wrong about everything because it's too damn cold outside to be able to concentrate on anything. Have you guys been outside yet today? Heck no, I'm not doing it. It's crazy cold outside. Mm -hmm. uh, Welcome Welcome to Alberta, Yeah, the coldest place on earth running three years in a row. I can't believe it. I I saw someone post on Facebook. It was like the 15 coldest places on earth and 14 of them, 14 of them were in Canada. I thought you were going to say 14 of them were Edmonton. No, 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 no. Well, and, and uh, Edmonton was like, <laughs> Edmonton was, was Strathcona number- County, County. The other was in yeah, West Alberta, Mount. Alberta. Like, yeah. So Edmonton was number five, but like Grand Prairie was number two. Number one was in Russia somewhere like Yakutsk or something. I'm not sure. Which is uh, cold. So why do we live here? I mean, Healthcare, good public education, sturdy economy, well-protected borders, a diverse also, community to, that is accepting of one another, we get a to firmly established, peaceful nation. It's cold. Yeah, we talk about how strong we are. We're like, oh, we like it. We're Canadian, blah, blah, blah. You know, we regularly make the list of uh, top 10 countries with the highest quality of life. But it's so cold. We should we should move somewhere, except it's really great here. Nah, so, we just got to build a giant heated dome. Yeah, Rogers Place. Go, go Oilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, as always, if you'd like to see where we got the frosty bits of wonder that we're going to yip yapper about, then please check out the episode description. Charlie waits until there's just enough frost on those alluring metal poles, and then he decides to lick it, knowing full well that his tongue is going to freeze and someone's going to have to pour hot water over it to separate him. There should be blood everywhere. It serves him right for doing that. We've told him a million times, and he's always got his tongue on something in the winter. So. Mm-hmm. You told me to get a metal microphone cover, Andrew. I yeah. We are also a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network. Yay team. Yeah. Yay friends. Woo. Yay squad. Yay. And you can check us out at it's a conspiracy podcast.com. Our Twitter at is it a conspiracy? That's run by the social media influencer. See Irish Madman. Our Facebook group, our Instagram page, the uh, It's a Conspiracy Podcast. That's run by Gorgeous Greg. Our email and our Patreon page, patreon.com slash <gasps> It's a conspiracy. That's funny. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. Oh, doubling down totally for run. that. Totally didn't around work the first the time. Do we want to? Do we want to try? No, no, that no, no. One I, more I think time? we're totally just running with okay. the Andrew. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just gonna keep that. Yeah, sure. We'll just we'll get double the donations with that. There. <laughs> uh, ready then? Joining the online distance communication time today is charming Charlie and gorgeous Greg. I- the succulent oh i'm sorry if Charles? i can uh, yes, i just wanted to uh, i mean i just you guys uh, this is the first time i've talked to you since christmas so you haven't had the chance uh, mm-hmm. but i just wanted to slightly correct you and and let you know that my my title has been updated i am now lord charlie scream uh-huh. um, oh your lordship I am, so do, I am do we call you lordship or sir uh, just Lord, Lord, Lord Charlie scream is fine. I mean, uh, I, won't be I feel like you've taken a few it. moments to sit down and think about what you want to be called. Yeah, well, like, uh, yeah, you know, just uh, just just giving you some notice that I now have some land in Hogan Manor Estate, and uh, with it comes a certain lordship. So okay, that's uh, a pretty cool thing that I got for Christmas. 
Well, title. your majesty. Yeah, you will leave. <laughs> Beg your pardon. <laughs> but you know, how dare I talk to you in the direct yeah, voice of a, of a I'll allow simpleton it. from Canada? Yeah, I'll allow it. If we make the mistake, please don't have us caned. It's, it's new. <laughs> only Michael caned. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. Uh, <laughs> so I, I apologize. And joining the online distance communication time today is Lord Charming Charlie. And Greg, have you any updates on your title? Thank God, no. No, no you're okay. <laughs> Still the same man that I was before Christmas. Thank God. That's right. Gorgeous Lord. Greg the third. Mm-hmm. These succulent spring rolls are going to interject as they see fit, and I do appreciate their socially distanced digital company. We're all in this together. Yep, yep. Keep your stick on the ice. Mm. Stick on the ice. <laughs> uh, Charlie, with a sturdy eye, Renee, can you tell me if you've heard of either of these theories? Let's do it. Number one, our mid-season rundown. Ooh, I. Okay. Uh, number two, four crazy theories from 2021. Asterisk. That aren't about COVID. <laughs> okay. Shocker. It would have been easy to find things about COVID, but I thought, hey, Nay. you know, why don't we talk about something else for a change? Anywho. Uh, so the subject number one, our mid-season rundown. <laughs> Episode one, the thought police, the snallygaster, <laughs> and how do the three seashells from Demolition Man actually work? Mm-hmm. Oh, Snallygaster. Not a day goes by that I don't think of that and chuckle in my heart. <laughs> Number two, the first vaccine, paradoxes, and the Vril Society. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Number three, the strange history of toilet paper, the DeWio, and the five most hygienic countries on Earth. Man, you were really, we you were really with the bathroom things in the early season, eh? Yeah, totally. A lot of toilet paper, a lot of hygiene. Mm-hmm. A lot of seashells. We went through a Costco load worth of seashells figuring it out. Yeah, I I, I think we need to rewatch that movie because I, I have nothing but fond memories, but maybe we shouldn't watch it because it might not hold up and it might just crush us. You know, I would say I would say you that you should to? watch it. You should rewatch it, but watch the cable version of it. So they they switch all the, uh, you know, to the, fuzzy fu- the fuzzy sock suckers and all that. <laughs> That's the way to watch it, baby. <laughs> I, I saw the Die Hard, the cable version of Die Hard once, and I was amazed at the creativity that they, yeah. They're yeah. like, all right, Mr. Fokker. Yeah. Uh, number four, Halloween in Lebanon, Bloody Mary, and the time Greg's mom ate all of his candy. <laughs> it happened again this year. Just, it, oh, yeah. it, it keeps happening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number five. The Gunpowder Plot and Project Bluebeam. Number six. I still have a lot of fond memories of this one here. The Burning Ghost Ship of the Northumberland Strait, Krakens, and the Secrets of Donair Sauce with Nathan Brass at Blowers and Grafton. Oh, How much fun was that? Oh, poop man. Cuck. So much fun. That was a great episode. I wish I was there. It was, dude. Oh, the Donairs we had afterwards, award winning. Oh, my Just, goodness. Yeah, filled up my heart. Probably good that you had some other chef there to tell you the consistency of what that sauce should be like. It's funny you should say that because I had I had a donair shortly after at, at another location. I was like, man, I'm jonesing for another donair. I need to have one. And uh, I've been a donair defender for a long time. I stopped at this place. I won't say where it was. And the monstrosity they gave me. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It was all all wrong. And I'm like, this is why people don't like donairs. Like, it's got a bad rap. This was like a like a cold pita with like bologna in it. I was like, first of all, first of all, first of all, I want names and I want addresses of these people that complain about donairs. Also, shame on on them. Shame on them. Yeah, just cherished properly. But, you know, if you have one donair experience, if you have one bad donair experience, then it kind of, you know, it's like anything. But well, then you just weren't drunk enough. Sorry. (laughs) I would also Um, like a fancy recipe for a uh, bologna donair. Oh, a bologna, if you will. I think, I think you have to go to the to the ancient lands of Newfoundland. I was just gonna say, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think Bologna. Halifax has that has that recipe. I think it's stuck in some sword in the middle of the ice in the middle of Newfoundland. <laughs> We've talked about bologna before, but like fried bologna, like yeah. I get a chub of bologna, big chunks. Oh, I got a chub just thinking about it. Number seven, one hundred fun facts with Aiden O'Donnell at Omen Brewing. That was a lot of fun. Eight. What is Festivus? The secret story behind Last Christmas 
and 10 different ways that aren't wrong to celebrate the holidays. And number nine, uh, Charlie's snack time revenge mm. with uh, with Jay, Jason Kuchar. Kuchar? Kuchar? How do we say his last name? Kuchar. Jason Kuchar. Jason Kuchar. Kuchar! Uh, and that was that was grotesque, Charlie. I listened to that episode again, and I had heartburn just thinking about it. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was a fun time. I want to say that buffalo wing mac and cheese, as good as that sounds, is vile. Look, and to have that topped off with dirt flavored pop, I was like, this. <laughs> I, I was so really, mad. I'm I so really mad wanted, at you. Oh. I wanted to try the olive juice. Yeah, oh. the olive black olive soda. The black olive soda. That sounds. Yeah. Right up my alley. Was the best of the worst. Yeah. <laughs> truly, truly. I, the I, would, a I would say that with someone form. who just, you know, making it fresh without the powder could probably do a much better job oh. of making those flavors into a craft dinner, you know, boost. Like you could yeah. just take, you know, hot wing sauce or buffalo wing sauce and put that on macaroni and cheese and have a much better time. Mm hmm. Like a buttery version of, of Frank's melted down. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, going to work on your mac sauce? and cheese. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. But the, the powder booster that Charlie had yeah. tasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, man. There were all and of it, these little powdered boosters that they came out with, and I was ma- able to round up four out of the six magical flavors. Like I was I was listening to the podcast, but I was also power lifting potatoes and mash into my face at the same time. Oh, man. <clears throat> it, was, it was an abomination of flavors. Like, I don't think, I don't think my tongue has forgiven me like you know what i mean like it's like no it's the real still, cornucopia no, of still don't feel good about this yeah no i don't and charlie forced eggnog on me and i hate and i don't use that word very often i hate eggnog i don't like saying it i don't like drinking it and he cooked he mixed in the last batch had instead of milk he used eggnog and i'm yeah, like festive festive eggnog that's that's a deep cut because I don't know if I've ever talked about my dislike of eggnog on the podcast, no. but you knew that. <laughs> Never. You this knew is, that. <laughs> this is new. So we're going to scrap the entire rest of this episode and just listen to Andrew rip on eggnog. I, oh. uh, one, two, three, go. I'm yeah. Well, first of all, anyways, no, it's fine. It translates to chicken milk in French. Le de poulet is just chicken milk. That tells you right there. Like if something that looks like milk is coming out of a chicken, you shouldn't drink it. You should take that chicken to the vet. Well, I think uh, like if you're, that's how you're going to look at it, then there's a lot of French foods that you are just not going to eat. <laughs> uh, anywho, let's so go to the chicken eggnog. doctor. <laughs> speaking of, of, of eggnog, uh, what what are we drinking? Oh, what are we drinking? Yeah, sure. I've, I've got some tiger tea in this here fancy. Uh, it's a conspiracy mug available at oldmandesign.com. <laughs> and I'll tell you that Bengal Spice Tea has a sweet, creamy flavor that adds a sumptuous quality to the medley of herbs and spices. This adventurous blend is like a trip to an exotic spice market in a faraway land. Ooh. Celestial Seasonings Tea is an invitation to bring the perfect balance to your day. Wow. Well, that does sound nice. I only mm-hmm. closed my eyes halfway between that. Can you start one more time? <laughs> <laughs> I blinked. <laughs> so... I took uh, I took my uh, my family up to Grand Prairie, which was quite exciting, and we stopped at the Grain Bin Brewing. Which, when you think of Grand Prairie, I don't know. For me, I was surprised that there was there's actually like three breweries there now. Oh, and I had a fantastic flight. But the the standout for me was the uh, let me just share this here. Share, share, share. Was this Red Willow American Amber Ale? Fantastic, uh, smooth and malty. Super, super good. And this kind of bright red was um, was what... Oh, here's what the can looks like here. Like really grain simple, but really, bin. really cool. Oh, yeah. I love those. Cl- that's a classic, iconic looking grain bin right there. Yeah. I'd been craving one. So I was like, hey, let's get going here. This definitive anytime beverage, mahogany in color, this classic amber ales mash bill includes blend of pale crystal and Munich malts, along with midnight wheat imparting aromas of toasted bread dough and caramel flavors. Centennial and Cascade hops hit the nose with citrus and complement the finish with orange zest characteristics. Pow! So this was good. However, I got a flight, like I said, and on the flight... Uh, was a habanero stout, which, Mm. yeah, I was like, that's really, really good. A spicy stout. It was fantastic. Cleaned out my sinuses. It was really habanero-y. And uh, yeah, hot damn, it was good. So anyways, grain bins, just real, real good stuff. 
Huh. So that's the one. Grain bin brewing. Hmm. Grain bin brewing. Good name. I, I've been keeping it quite simple with, uh, you know, the coffee and also my It's a Conspiracy coffee mug. Oh. You can find it at <laughs> oldmandesign.com. Topped up with a little bit of Bailey's and, uh, oddly enough, some Zabrovka vodka, which is a uh, bison grass infused vodka. Oh, I wish I had brought down my It's a Conspiracy cup, but I brought down my, uh, I don't think you guys can see this, my kitty cup. Can you guys see that? Yeah. That looks like it's, it's conspiracy. Cats look yeah. like they're up to something. It's all a cat spiracy. Don't I? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to read it, but it says cats rule. Mm. And indeed they do. Mm. Yep. They do something, the jury is still out sure. on that one. Mm. <laughs> but I, I think I think the, the powerfulness of the, of the cocktail comes from the mug. So. Mm. Obviously. Yes, no doubt. No doubt. Well, that's going to take us to add number one. This episode of It's a Conspiracy is brought to you by the Alberta Association of Optometrists, proudly celebrating a century of caring for Albertans. It happens. Many people don't call their optometrist first for urgent eye care when they need it. From spring cleaning mishaps to winter eye infections, if you or your family have an eye emergency, doctors of optometry are trained to diagnose, treat, and prescribe medications. No referral necessary. And just a reminder, Alberta Health coverage is available towards your urgent eye care appointments. To find an optometrist in your area, visit optometrist.ab.ca. The Alberta Association of Optometrists represents almost 800 doctors of optometry in over 80 communities across the province. Members are highly trained, regulated health professionals who provide primary eye health and vision care to Albertans. Learn more at optometrist.ab.ca. Uh, here we go. Subject number two. We're back. Whoa. Subject number two. Four crazy theories from 2021. Asterisk that aren't about COVID. Uh, number one. Ivermectin. Just hear me out. <laughs> Just kidding. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just hear me out. <laughs> just wait. Just, just let me hold on. Um, here are I wrote five, but I meant to write four crazy theories. And one of these isn't a theory. So it's actually more like three from 2021 that aren't about COVID. OK, number one, salmon chaos, salmon, the chicken of the sea. Maybe that's tuna. Is it chicken or salmon? It's tuna. On March 16th of 2021, a Japanese company called Sushiro ran an ad campaign to promote their fantastic salmon sushi. Basically, anyone whose name was a homophone of the word salmon would be able to get a special name discount. So this sounds like sake, like the alcohol, but sake is how you say salmon in Japanese. Okay. If your name had the sound sake in it, uh, then you could get yourself some free salmon. Also, anyone who had the same Chinese characters as sake in their name, these people could invite five friends to any of the Sushido restaurants and eat for free. Now, what the good people of Sushido didn't understand or didn't realize, I guess, is that it's very, very, very easy to change your name legally in Taiwan. And a number of people, mostly university students at first, took full advantage of this. So suddenly, a number of people with the name Salmon showed up at the stores and the troubles, that's where they that's where they began. By March 19th, a mere three days after the promotion was announced, 332 people had legally changed their names to Salmon, and the Taiwanese government had to step in. Chen Sung Yen, I hope I'm saying that right, Deputy Minister of the Interior, publicly scolded the Taiwanese population in an official announcement saying, this kind of name change not only wastes time, but causes unnecessary paperwork. Taiwanese news outlets referred to this as an international embarrassment. While one popular writer from Taiwan named Nick Wang defended the behavior, stating, there's nothing wrong with being greedy and saving money. So if you like being greedy and saving money, then maybe you should change your name to Mr. Salmon. Lord Salmon, thank you very Lord, much. <laughs> sorry, Lord, 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 Lord Salmon. Lord Salmon. <laughs> Lord Salmon Chaos. Number two is a solar probe. So for the first time in history, a machine made by the rugged hands of the lunch pail carrying blue collar Joes at NASA has touched the surface of the sun. Not quite, but the Parker solar probe flew into the sun's upper atmosphere, which is still 
uh, 8.1 million miles from the actual surface of the sun and collected samples of particles there. This close contact will give scientists, if you believe in scientists, the opportunity to study the sun in a way that has never before been possible. If you believe in the sun. If you believe in the sun, that's right. Flying so close to the sun, Parker's solar probe now senses conditions in the magnetically dominated layer of the solar atmosphere, the corona, that we could never see before, said Norawafi, the Parker Project scientist at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland, which is where Charlie gets all of his monsters oh, from. That's a monster hub. Yeah. And we were corrected by our friend Paul. I thought it was pronounced Maryland. And he's like, it's not Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> Maryland. <laughs> Thank God we had oh, how the hell am I supposed to know that? Um, now we see evidence of being in the oh sorry. We see evidence of being in the corona in magnetic field data, solar wind data, and visually in images. We can actually see the spacecraft flying through coronal structures that can be observed during a total solar eclipse. This probe was named after University of Chicago professor Eugene Parker. What an amazing name that is. Parker? And I want pictures of Spider-Man on my on the desk by the... Um, he has the honor of being the first living person to see a dedicated probe launched that was like named after him. Isn't that nice? So they should stop waiting until these people die to start naming things after them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Give them some alive good feels. Yeah. Uh, and fun fact, there is no nitrogen on the sun. There's only daytrogen. If only my mouse was closer to the leave button. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I got, I got something. I have got something for this. Uh, number three. Uh, so this is amazing. Nostradamus's zombies so that's right we finally got to speaking albeit briefly on nostradamus the fortune teller who wrote the book i think it's called centuries from a long 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 time ago and it predicted napoleon the london fires world hitler. wars what's that hitler hitler that's right kennedy assassination louis pasteur the twin towers charles de gaulle and zombies so in 1555 Nostradamus wrote this of the year 2021. Few young people, half dead to give a start. Dead, though sprite, he will cause others to shine. And in an exalted place, some great evils to occur. Sad concepts will come to harm each one. Temporal dignified, the mass to succeed. Fathers and mothers dead of infinite sorrows. Women in mourning, the pestilent she monster. The great one to be no more, all the world to end. So what does all that gobbledygook mean? Zombies. Zombies. It was Absolute zombies. zombies led by a pestilent she monster. So so obviously anyone oh. doubting. Oh. Oh. It, it, well, that's what he says. Pestilent she monster. Now, for anyone doubting, I would say that normally I'd be like, oh, come on now. But 2021, let's zombies doesn't <laughs> seem like a stretch. Uh, maybe by zombies, they just mean teenagers zoned out on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> More like anti-social media. <laughs> Am I right? Hey. Hey. Uh, oh. yeah. oh. you're all over those things. That's good. Now, um, you have to excuse my language. This may sound like a bunch of bullpucky. <gasps> but the Center for Disease Control in the United States actually took this seriously enough to release a zombie preparedness kit online. They also released a graphic novel, which is included in the notes and looks absolutely slapping. Okay, now here's a quick rundown of what they say we'll need. You'll need food. Mm -hmm. You'll need water. You'll need tools. You'll need clothing. You'll need a radio. You'll need personal hygiene products. Mm -hmm. You'll need medications. You'll need important documents. And you'll need some first aid kits. Multiple. Yeah, yeah. As many Somehow, as you can carry. Yeah, exactly. Somehow the... Uh, wet blankets at the Center for Disease Control forgot to include things like nunchucks or shotguns or bear traps. I mean, if you're going to make it into a zombie wasteland. You'd absolutely. I mean, if you're bringing your personal hygiene products, why not bring a set of nunchucks in case you get attacked? And That's you should also bring someone who's going to have like a weird like religious awakening in the no. zombie apocalypse because there's always what? someone. Oh, for sure. <laughs> 
I just think, Andy, if you Oof. brought some nunchucks, do you have the training to use them? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Certainly not. <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's this not is all practice from here. Aside from the OG yeah. Ninja Turtle documentation. The best, the they, best practice you don't hit anybody. You just yeah. you, you block them. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it looks like they were trying to turn the uh, uh, the zombie apocalypse into a ugh, a learning opportunity. Gross. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and our last here theory. This is this is fantastic. So uh, number four, the TikTok time traveler. What? <laughs> it turns out that in 2021. The best way to announce that you are a time traveler is by posting videos on the TikTok. That's the real media, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, spoilers in advance. None of this crap that this moron says happens. Okay. Well, yeah. I we mean, don't know out. that. He's from the future, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's very specific in a couple of cases. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. Oh, some of these have happened. The dates have passed. Anyways, we'll get to it here. Okay. But because now, he told us it didn't happen. A few months ago, an account called That One Time Traveler was created on TikTok. And this individual started making bold claims about being from the future and explaining how he'd, or maybe she'd, become stuck in our time. Women can be time travelers too, Greg. Come on. Uh, they claim to be from Whoa. the year 2485. Whoa. Don't put that on me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm an equal opportunist time yeah. traveler right here. <laughs> They claimed to be from the year 2485 and had a few prophecies for what was coming up next. So I'm going to start off with a couple before we get to the uh, to the funner ones here. All right. So uh, number one, Finland, Sweden and the United Kingdom would join into one mega country. Ooh. Now, if you put Finland, UK and Sweden together, it would say which is great okay number two the brooklyn nets which i didn't realize was actually a team would defeat the la lakers in 2022 so if you're we'll into uh football uh yeah NBA. <laughs> go 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 grizzlies place your bets uh number three this is interesting the sun will turn green in august of 2022 which is exciting uh number four <laughs> this is this is also exciting Atlantis will be discovered in February. Okay. And a new human fish hybrid species will be established. Nice. So there you go. Thank you, China. Uh, on December 20th of 2021. So that's in the past now. That's how time travel works. Select human beings will receive superpowers from energy blasts originating from the sun. Now, how do you know that hasn't happened? Yeah. yeah. That sounds amazing. That absolutely sounds amazing. Like this, okay. this is something you cannot claim did not happen. I, and this is not the one I'm saying didn't happen. Okay. okay. December 25th. The prediction was something big will happen on this day that shocks the world and changes the way humans live forever. Now, aside from my daughter getting Pokemon Snap, did you guys know about anything that was shocking? I know, but I stayed away from it. What was that great movie that came out by Leonardo DiCaprio? Are you talking about Don't Look Up? <clears throat> I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, it's, it's good. <laughs> um, anyways, so he he deliberately, people were like, what's going to happen? What are you talking about? He's like, everybody's going to know. Everybody's going to see it happen. I'm not going to say anything. So that's all he had for details. However, Snoopy researchers, I need to get through this without laughing. Snoopy researchers noted that he had earlier suggested that the Christmas prophecy may have been so a plucky group of teenagers accidentally activate a time travel device that they find. This opens a portal to ancient Earth. They stumble through the portal and they notice that the portal is like closing behind them. So they're like, oh, quick, we have to get back to the future. Just as the portal is about to close, a T-Rex comes through oh. and goes on a rampage across the city. After it destroys the city, it lays a bunch of eggs, which hatch immediately. And the babies who are super intelligent and speak English, start flying around in helicopters and take over the internet. <laughs> Damn. You couldn't say that without laughing, could you? That sounds amazing. I can't and wait for absolutely. that. Yeah, that would be something that changes the way humans live, right? Like a bunch of T-Rex babies <laughs> flying around in helicopters. Oh man, I can't okay. wait to get some T-Rex hugs because they're going to tickle uh, you. You got to get, gotta so get close. real close hey, too because they got those little hold arms. On. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. How are the T Rex gonna fly the helicopters with their with their tiny arms? Oh, Charlie, you found a flaw in that theory. <laughs> Trying to reach the thing, can't do it. 
You know, like that's like an opinion to me. I know. Yeah, totally. You keep your opinions in your pants, buddy. (laughs) Oh, so that's four crazy theories that uh, they're not about COVID for 2021. Andrew, I hate to do this to you. Boom. Um, Mm -hmm. What was number one again? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe we need four new jokes for 2022. (laughs) Uh, Uh, That ain't going to happen. Are we calling it 2022 electric boogaloo or what? Oh, yes, we are. Please. That's that's a joke that'll never get old. No one no one hates that joke. No one at all hates that joke. That's yeah, going to take no. us to ad number two. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Bonkink. I'm Andrew Paul. And we're the hosts of the Well Endowed Podcast. The Well Endowed Podcast is produced by Edmonton Community Foundation, or ECF as we call it. ECF provides grants to charities through the endowment funds we create and manage with our donors. Hence the title of our show, The Well Endowed Podcast. Every month, we bring you a collection of stories and interviews with fascinating guests who are working to make Edmonton a strong, vibrant city to live in. Through these stories, we look at the space where endowments intersect with your communities. So if you're interested in the people and issues impacting your community, check out thewellendowedpodcast.com. So we don't really have opinions on this stuff. Like there's just some kind of like wrap ups here. But what are you guys going to do to celebrate uh, New Year's Eve? Anything special? Anything fun? Anything festive? Anything well, unfestive? Anything boring? Middle, middle of the road. I'm, we're okay, just going to gonna have my folks over and we're going to order some Chinese food. That's it. Nice and chill. Sounds We're not going crazy. crazy. We're not going that crazy. very nice. Yeah. Hmm. Aww. Boom. Well, that's funny. I, I received some invitations from the future and I might meet up with some teenagers who said they found a crazy time portal and uh, wanted very some Tyrannosaurus like for dinner. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it. Just <laughs> show fixed. up on time. <laughs> I am going to uh, I'm going to stay home. I'm I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't had a, a New Year's Eve at home in a long, long time. Now, one of the things that uh, I, I'm quite excited about, I'm going to do a FaceTime Monopoly. OK, oh, no. so every, everybody's got a Monopoly board. So no table flipping. Yeah, no tip. And if somebody does flip their table, it's like you're in another time zone. So it doesn't matter. You've got yeah, to. We've, we've still there. got your record. Mm-hmm. One of the things, one of the things that I that I, I need to point out that has become a, a Scott family, uh, I guess, uh, an addendum or amendment, like when they amend the Constitution. So we've made an amendment to the Constitution of Monopoly, and this changes <laughs> it into an actual fun game that people can enjoy without coming away ashamed of themselves. This in itself sounds like a conspiracy. Set a turn timer. So you're like, we're going to play for 50 rounds. And at the end of 50 rounds, whoever has the most, that's the winner. And believe me, there's like, there's no tears. There's no, like, nobody's walking away being like, I'm so sorry. I said that I apologize. (laughs) You know, like nobody's throwing punches at their parents. Like it's great. So uh, yeah, we're going to do some online monopoly. Okay. Alrighty then chums. So 2021 was quite the year and I'm glad we all got through it together. Uh, Let's hope it's uh, happy days ahead. And we'll be back with season 11 in a few weeks. So in the meantime, if you're needing some slappy jams on your honey hams, then slide into our past casts and social medias at it's a conspiracy podcast.com. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. Season 11? Episode 11. Episode 11. Did oh, I say season 11? You said season 11 <laughs> and I was like... Oh. No, this is mid-season. This is not the end of Time it. travel. Yeah, quit with your damn time traveling, Andy. <laughs> you wanted time travel? Oh. It's a conspiracy! <laughs> Should old acquaintance be forgotten and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgotten and dates of old Days of old.